this is the last video in my series on making my four column beam engine. What follows are a few video clips of the final construction stages and at the end there will be some pictures of the completed engine. I've added a few more notes to the general arrangement drawing for this four column beam engine to try and help me work out what's going on. Well things sort of line up. I remade this uh, link here which has helped a bit I think. This um, pointer is now the centre line of where the cylinder will go, this part, which is not assembled. And by me squares, that pointer is now vertical pretty much in uh, both planes. So if I translate this point to the base, and that's where I put the cylinder down, it should be okay. That's the plan. But I think what I'm going to do before I do all that, because a certain amount of disassembly will be necessary to sort all this out, before I do that I'm going to stop working on this aspect and actually make the governor and the, um, and the pump that goes here somewhere I think um, so that when I come to finally reassemble I can probably do the whole lot in one, in one go that's me thinking, probably won't work, nothing ever does, but uh, we'll see how we get on. I was machining the pump body for this four column beam engine and thinking how easy it was and how well I was getting on. And when I went to bed I woke up and thought there's something wrong. And of course, I suddenly realised that this is just a dummy. There's no way for water to get in or out in terms of the, uh, of the pump ram. Well, if I wanted to build a dummy, I wouldn't be making a metal model in the first place. I'd buy a plastic kit. So, uh, anyway, I've now got to think about how to modify this to make it a working pump. Bloody hell. Probably a bit naughty really, but to make the uh, the pump for the beam engine a working one, I've decided to copy the, uh, the way it was done on my Stuart Models beam engine. So I've made a working uh, valve box or something, I don't know what you call it really, to attach to what was going to be the dummy uh, pump on this four column beam engine. So uh, this pump will now work when I finish it. Um, that's the inlet clack, that's the outlet clack, just 330 second stainless steel, bog standard stuff really. 30 second diameter stainless steel balls in them to act as non-return valves. I will eventually silver solder this onto its base. I haven't done so yet because I'm not totally sure where this lot is going to fit on the engine and uh, I'm not sure whether this uh, base plate is the correct size it might want reducing I'm unclear about that so I'm going to leave that little operation till I'm more certain of events nothing's bolted down permanently yet but I think the pump with its uh, non-return valves is in about the right place and the pump rod and the activating rod is of the right length, give or take. And I think um, 
that's where the cylinder needs to go. So at some point I'm going to have to take my life in my hands and start to uh, try and tap the base to fix some of this lot down. Not really looking forward to that because I think I'm going to have to take loads of things apart to uh, do the drilling and tapping. Ah oh well. Starting to get the bones of the um, governor mechanism in. This is the linkage. The governor will go up and down here. And at this end, it will link to a uh, controlling butterfly valve into the steam chest. But uh, this is all a bit of a faff, all this linkage really. Okay, bit of a step forward. I think the governor's about done, thank goodness, including its little drive pulley. Uh, the drawing called for half inch diameter balls, ain't got none, so I've used um, three eighths, but I don't think the governor, I think that'll be fine actually. It's, it's cosmetic as much as anything else. I'm never going to really run this uh, engine in, in anger anyway. So, uh, that's cool. I've now made the studs for the top cylinder cover and the stuffing boxes etc. Uh, they do need shortening because some of them are a bit over length. But um, we are slowly getting on. Slowly. I'm slowly getting on with a valve body for the beam engine. One of the tricks, if it is a trick, in terms of all the 10BA drillings, of which there are a few, is to make a jig, which is this bit, which is pre-drilled and just fits in the various uh, parts, so that whatever happens, whether the orientation is right, it's a different question, but at least the pitch circle diameters are all the same. So that's the way I do it, but anyway. Slowly making a bit of progress on the stop valve, uh, butterfly valve arrangement for this beam engine. Got a slight alignment problem to sort out on what will be the, um, the stop spindle, but that won't be too difficult to get that, to get that sorted. Um, Loads of 10BA stuff. It's a bit like watchmaking. Well, it's not watchmaking, but too close to watchmaking for my 78 year old fingers, I'll tell you that. Well, at this stage, I've got absolutely no idea how I'm going to fit this. But in theory, this is the butterfly valve to go into the valve body and the um, flap itself consists of a bit of 15 thousandths of an inch thick shim and uh, in theory somehow it goes in there and the spindle goes through here and somehow I've got to push that shim looks a bit oversized at the moment, I don't know probably not um, into this spindle I don't look forward to this deary deary dear we shall see I'm afraid you might have to take my word for it. 
but the valve, uh, the butterfly valve, with its whatever you call it, is in there. I don't know if you can see this moving. Whether it'll actually be effective, I've got no idea. But it's in. There we go, that's good enough. I've roughed out the two side rods which will operate the slide valve gear. Um, they attach to this uh, bottom arrangement which goes up and down and then I'll got to make a T-piece here on the um, slide valve rod, make a T-piece which will then attach to, to the rods. And then the, uh, the theory is that the whole assembly, these are, as you can see, a link and move up and down. Maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. Anyway, these then operate the side rods, which then operates the slide valve. Um, I'm going to have to give it some thought as to how the whole thing's got to be timed up. No idea at this stage. But we'll get there. I've made... Yet another mistake, this crosshead, dimension this side is about 60 tower longer than this side, which means the sort of rod doesn't fit properly, so I need to reduce uh, this distance from here to here by about 60 tower. Oh dear. I don't know if this will come out, but the struggle to get these two nuts onto their studs and also there's a nut, there's a nut here and another nut under there that you probably can't see, right, the struggle to get those nuts onto their studs has taken well in excess of an hour. Drove me crackers. I lagged the cylinder with some strips of wood basically to improve its appearance. I've added some not particularly well fitting checker plate to the top of the base in an attempt, I hope, to improve its appearance. The engine is to be named Angela after my wife who's put up with my uh, shenanigans in the workshop this year and I've ordered some name plates which I will put on the engine to say that. Thank you very much for watching. I have now moved on to another project which I hope will be actually quicker than this one turned out to be. Many thanks.